Hi, we're the James family. Are you sick of your day-to-day -day life? Ever thought about doing something different? Well, we did just that. We bought an unfinished aluminium catamaran and we're fixing her up as we sail around the world. Come along for the journey and click subscribe. Daddy? Mommy? Charlie? This week, we are setting sail in some heavy winds and we're finding out whether or not our most valued crew member, Otto the Autopilot, is fully fixed. And we're solving a problem with our fuel tanks. We are on the east coast of Australia, just off the city of Mackay, and are headed north up the Queensland coast. And today, we are headed from Curlew Island to Scarfield Island. So we are en route to Scarfield from Curlew Island. And uh, we've got the head sail out and two reefs in the main and sailing along beautifully. Yeah, so the forecast was 15 to 20. It was meant to be slightly lighter today. So that's why we chose to, to, to leave. Um, she's blowing about 25 knots out there at the moment. So a little bit more than predicted, but we're, we're going quite fast. We're covering ground quite well and we're not slapping too, too much. So it's going good. And as you can hear, Hopefully you can hear it in the background. Otto, the autopilot is back with us, working away, getting us there safely. So, yeah, it's fantastic. Yeah. And we're putting the lures out. We're just changing them from a wire tracer to a mono tracer and filing the, um, the hooks. The mono tracer on it. We've been running with a lot of wire tracers and so we've got an experiment. We've got two redheads out today, one with a wire tracer on this side and we're going to have a mono tracer on that side and uh, see if one of them will catch a fish. Uh, thank you. I need a Good girl. Fishy. Yeah, for fishies. nautical out there today you can hear Otto the autopilot grinding away down there working very very hard and while all this is going on <laughs> hey float out she's a good traveler yeah like Sam just said if you guys can hear that the brrr, there it is that is the autopilot. Sam's fixed it, working brilliantly. Beautiful. That is the best noise in the world, the octopus pump. going 8.5 knots so what is that a um, about 29 30 knots <laughs> but the boat is handling it awesomely um she's she's just sailing along beautifully um it's really comfortable and she's just smashing through the waves yeah giving us a lot of faith in the boat it's really good it's let us know there's a few things we might need to pack away a bit better next time, but apart from that, it's all really, really good. Yeah, but she still is on a diet. Yes, 
Yeah, we want us to slap every third wave instead of every second. Yeah. Uh, that's the plan. At this point, you might be wondering how the experiment is going with the lures, the wire tracer versus the monofilament tracer. A tracer, or also called a leader, is basically a piece of rope that connects the main fishing line to the lure to protect the line from the sharp teeth of a predator fish and is a precaution so that the fish is less likely to bite through the line and you lose the lure. When we first started trawling a year ago, we learned the hard way and lost three very good and very not so cheap lures. So our results from the experiment are that the clear monofilament tracers are the winner. Maybe it's because the clear line gives the lures the appearance of a real fish. So we've arrived at Scarfeld in Refuge Bay. We had an awesome sail today. Uh, our average was 7.1 knots. We did 47 nautical miles and um, our highest speed was 12.3 knots. So we're super stoked. Yeah, yeah, the boat's definitely getting better. Putting her on a diet has definitely helped and she's feeling better. At the moment, what I found yesterday is we had a bit of trouble with the autopilot again. And what I believe it is, is she's just sort of dropping off and sagging in the bum. There's a bit too much weight aft with our engines, our water, and now the back lockers having a considerable amount of stuff in them. And what that does also is because we're slightly, I had a look, we're slightly trimmed by the stern. So what it does is it makes our mast lean back a little bit, which puts the center of effort aft when we're sailing. And that's what's contributing to a lot of our weather helm. So before we go sailing tomorrow, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go on the back lockers we're so close to Airlie, it's only 50 mile or so away. So we can't really get rid of stuff now, but we're just gonna move the weight forward. Uh, that way the, the bending moment will be a lot less, which is distance times weight, we'll bring it in and that'll stop us dropping off those waves, sagging in the bum, and then having to load the rig up so much to get it going on every single wave. So. That'll be the plan and eventually we'll get rid of a little bit more weight out of the uh, back lockers, distribute it a bit better and I'll have a, a closer look when it's not so windy and do some trim marks on the hull just so I know what, if we are trimmed by the R for the stern and to keep the boat a bit more level so the centre of effort is a lot better balanced on the rig. It'll take all the weight off our rudders and our poor autopilot. Uh, we don't have any more fuses left so... <laughs> We want that all apart to last till early. We're so close, but I don't want a hand steer, so yeah. fingers crossed. What we're doing is we're going to cut this bit of timber out here and make it a lot larger. What this here is, is this is our dipping point for our starboard fuel tank. And I've got quite fat fingers. I can't, it's a spring loaded valve and I can't get in there to open it to put the dipstick down the side. So if we cut that a little larger, the covery case will still cover the cut, still look aesthetically pleasing and fit in there nicely. And that way I'll be able to dip the tanks a lot more. So what we have here, these are our, our two dipsticks for port and starboard. It's unusual because they do have different markings on them. One of our tasks is once we get low on fuel, we're going to go to a Vowser and just put it in and mark every 20 litres on it. I'm keeping a little bit more of a closer eye on our fuel. We've got Kiwi props on and uh, me being a Kiwi, uh, I should love the props, but at this stage, I don't believe they're quite suited for this boat and for the weight of this boat. They don't really give us much push. And so I'm keeping a, a closer eye on the fuel now to try and justify buying new props because I won't be able to buy just one. I'll have to buy two. And at this stage, we just got a quote back from Gory Propellers. For the size of this vessel, it'll be around about $11,000.
and we can buy a lot of diesel for eleven thousand dollars so uh, i'm essentially just trying to justify <laughs> the purchase because i really want new props um let us know in the comments below what props you guys have and uh what props you would recommend and if any of you do have kiwi props out there and um yeah they're working well for you let us know that as well so maybe we don't need to swap them but i just think for heavier boats we've got 18 and a half inch props and they're just not really giving us as much push as what i'd like them to give us hey yeah. The supervisor up there supervising. Uh, uh, really? Yeah, supervisor. There we go. Perfect. Just a little bit of minor surgery. When we put this on, no one will ever know. But when we take it off, I can get my little fat fingers in there, open up the non-return, and put the dip down it. And then, yeah, keep an eye on our fuel consumption. So we have 600 litre tanks on here. According to the marks on here, we could probably fit more than 600 litres. Um, one thing that's slightly unusual is, if we flip them around here, you see they don't actually match either side and uh, they're not uniform either so as in the gap isn't uniform between each and every mark either side so we're not a hundred percent positive that that this is the way it should be the plans indicate that the tanks are exactly the same that never always works out in reality and we're definitely trusting these more than we are the plans because the previous owner was quite astute with this kind of stuff and there's a very good chance these are 100% correct. The only thing we do want to do in the future is just put some more marks on here so that way we can keep a little bit a closer eye on our fuel because 1200 litres of fuel on a, on a boat like this is a lot of fuel and uh, it takes us a long time to run the tanks down. But yeah, to check them, you look here, we're on the starboard hull, which is this one. Now, I can just get my little fat fingers in there, open up the hole, put it down the bottom, give it a couple of bangs on the striking plate, bring it back up, let it sit on the top there, and there we go. Our fuel level at the moment, at a guess that's 300 litres, so that'll be about hmm, 330 litres. That's where we are on this side. Yeah, that's another little boat job done for the day. Thank you so much for watching. If you're enjoying watching our videos and want to help keep us afloat, consider jumping over to our Patreon page. The link is in the description below. And don't forget to hit those like and subscribe buttons and we'll see you all next week.